Julian Sanchez is on pole for race two. Zeus Moro on her inside as we get going here. And Zeus Moro with a kind of a crabby start. And Carlin Dumian, what a launch he got as he makes it three wide. Coming towards turn one through the middle. Very aggressive move very early on. Bill Littlejohn also dives to the bottom, uh, making it three wide. A couple of rows back as they stay three wide off the corner. Can't believe they made it six. Zeus Moro actually manages to get the early lead with Carl and Dumian perhaps slipping in a second, but Kim Markell is there as well. There's a small wreck just behind these guys. We'll get to that in just a moment. Zeus Mora, though, extends his lead to a couple of Carlins over Carl and Dumian, still side by side with Julian Sanchez. Actually clears the 58 as they're three wide heading into station five. This could get interesting considering what happened on lap one in race one, but no one really smashes into the back of each other too bad and they're still three wide coming up into turn number six Markel Crasta and Sanchez still there and it's Markel that's gonna actually get into third position with that move what a power move for her on this very first lap things got very tight at the rear, very rear of the field Mike Doan started 33rd but Alex Allen got into Cruz Louvier collecting uh, Zach Riel and Demir Bejenov in the 13 car. Most drivers would pull away without even, without any trouble whatsoever. Bejenov went for a spin, actually hit the 33 afterwards, um, and the 33 would stall his car out, trying to get that thing going again, and he will go two laps down with with the toe uh, back to the pits. The messy midfield heads up into turn number six. Drivers still trying to sort themselves out here early on. Uh, Don Thompson Jr. racing alongside Ophelia and Dumian and Sam Morrow. Uh, Ophelia's teammate Carl and Dumian currently in second, of course, so wouldn't be surprised to see Ophelia make her way up a few positions since Carl seems so damn fast uh, so far this weekend. Ty Dent and Matthew Stringer are side by side just a bit further up. Uh, Ty Dent trying to clear Stringer before we head to get to the kink where it's nearly impossible to pass along the inside. TJ Dent and Thanos side by side just a little bit further up and Thanos will win that out uh, win out easily. Chris Louvier pits at the end of lap number one probably as a result of the damage sustained in the first corner incident but we are three wide for around 24th position. Sam Curtis, Jeff Derry, J.R. Fitzpatrick three abreast they sort things out before turn one luckily. Uh, Jeff Derry really on a, on a roll here he's he started dead last in this race, has already made his way up 10 positions on his way towards the top 20. Shrimp Engritz, uh, James Silverfox, and Sean Morrison racing three abreast as well, just a little bit further up. Engritz has to uh, give in, and it's Daniel Voyles and Johnny Appleseed two wide just in front of them. Voyles slips into Appleseed as we head into Station 5 for the second time. Dent takes a peek on Indumian, can't do anything with that charge for now. Carl and Dumian and Kim Markell in the O2 have been ringing in the 17 since the start of the race. The O2, of course, up from row three at the start and made her way up into third position uh, before we even tur hit turn six on the first lap. But here comes Carl and Dumian with a, with a big charge on the number 17. Gets even with him out of turn number six into turn seven. He's got the help of Kim Markell and they both go flying by. That, that actually looks like the 17 has a problem with the way uh, Zeus has been falling back in in the last little bit. Actually, we are hearing uh, that the 17 has a tire going down, and that's a real shame for him. He had a great start, started very well, but just isn't going to pan out in the end for him. He's going to need to pit that car at the end of lap number one. He's going to have a hard time getting that back to the pits without blowing a tire. That will firmly slot Julian Sanchez into third, though she is losing time to the two leaders, that being Markel and Indumian. DJ Harris takes a peek on the inside, but forced to stay behind her for now. Krasta and Little John made some contact through the last corner. Little John's hood just slightly propped up from that uh, impact, but I'm sure Bill knows as well as any other driver in the field that rubbing is racing, especially with these full-bodied uh, late model machines, but Krasta manages to hold on to fifth for now. They're both reeling in the 36 at, at this moment in time. Sam Morrow, perhaps not as on pace as the other cars that he is racing, as he is really stacking them up. And Dumian, Obrovac, and Stringer three wide through station five up towards 
turn six. They've been able to make this work before, but Obrovac manages to get back in front of the two. The two, as I said on lap number one, making her way forward towards the front, just as Carl Indumian is, and as Indumian is now in the lead, of course, after uh, after Moro had to hit head into the pits. On board, Mike Doan in the 72 cars. He struggles to make his way forward a few positions early on. He's He's made up six spots since the start of this race, going from 33rd to 27th or 26th. But uh, he's trying to reel in J.R. Fitzpatrick on these long straightaways where draft is such a big deal. But Doan needs to finish in the top 20 in order to hold on to the point lead heading into the season finale with Tanker's win. It really puts Mike Doan in a do or die situation here. Markel and Endumian continue to pull away as the battle for third has been nearly continuous. DJ Harris going for that position along with Julian Sanchez as you cannot even see Kim Markel as they race further up. Bill Littlejohn nearly got turned off the racing surface by Fall of Thanos. Luckily he was able to keep that together in the 30 machine. Having a good day so far. Might be able to get a top 10, perhaps even a top 5 if he can make his way forward. Just a couple more positions. Sam Morrow and Luca Obrovac pit very early, and that will hand Stringer 8th position in the 87 car. Uh, Morrow is really holding this big group up, and, they, and because of that, there's, a, there's quite a gap between Thanos and Stringer for 7th and 8th, respectively. And Dumian, currently alongside Marcus Stroman for that 9th position. Alex Wheeler trying to make his way forward in the 69 car. Uh, DJ Harrison in the 36 is up to 3rd and both of those cars seem set up very well for the conditions here at Road America today. At the half, Waymark Kim Markell still has not been able to pose a major threat to Indumian, but has been able to stay right with him. Harris has separated himself from Sanchez and currently holds third. Little John up into fourth in that number 30 machine as Stringer and Indumian struggle to close the gap between themselves and Thanos in seventh. And that begins a long string of cars that leads all the way down to about uh, 23rd, uh, ending with Faber there. Markel has proven she's fast, but now she's going for the lead on Carl and Dumian, going very close to the side of that number one machine, trying to push him out as far as she can into turn six. She's got the optimal line, but Andumian could get her good run on the outside, and, and it could set him up well for the next corner. And Dumian, yes, slips right in front of back in front of the O2 to hold on to that lead. Heading into Station 5, Thanos locks up the brakes in the number 42 car, tries to drop to the inside to avoid running into the 21, but gets into him regardless and into the gravel trap just a little bit. The 21 goes. Only one position lost for him overall and not too, too much damage to his rear end, so not that big of a deal, but I'm sure um, Krasta will not be too happy about that one. Lap 13 has arrived in a hurry, and in comes the top number, uh, the top two, Carlin Dumin in the one, and Kim Markell in the 02. DJ Harris also in, not, we didn't see as many drivers short pit in this race as we saw in race number one. No uh, really aggressive early pitters like Spencer Fullerton or Brandon Krasta, but it's Fall of Thanos who is the first car to stay out one extra lap going on to lap 14 along with Julian Sanchez, TJ Dent just behind, has been plagued with mechanical problems all race long, is not even close to on pace on the straightaways, and that's because he is down a cylinder in that 18 machine. 12 of Tyler Faber actually came in a few laps ago to pit and and went out of the race. They just had to, the, the engine just shut off on him during the, during the refueling and they could not get that thing started. Quite a few drivers in the midfield decided to stay out the extra lap and are currently being held up a little bit by TJ Dent who is around six or seven seconds a lap off the pace in that 18 machine. Really being a bit of a nuisance right here for the cars as they approach their pit window. Of course everyone going for one final pass before heading on to pit road. Johnny Appleseed taking a look on the number two as the 27 and the 52 race side by side into the final corner as well. They sh we should see them come into the pits now. Yep, no one, no one dare stay out another extra lap or try and make it all the way to the end. Mike Doan in the 72 pushes Carl and Dumian wide and will end this stream of cars heading onto pit road this lap. Coming to two to go this time by Carl and Dumian. 
retakes the lead, and it's Kim Markell in second in the O2, right on his tail. Might take a look down into turn number one. Yes, she drops to the inside in that O2 machine, and will get a nose up on the one in through turn number one. But Carlin Dumina has been so strong on that outside. It, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to matter where you place that one car. Carlin Dumian seems to be able to drive that line and hold off whatever car he wants. As that, and that's exactly what he does right now. Kim Markel forced back into second, but I'm sure this won't be her f final challenge here in these final two laps. Kim Markel losing a lot of ground to Carlin Dumian all of a sudden through turn number six. I don't know whether she's going to be able to close back in on the number one. Not sure whether it's a bad lap. No, she drops to the inside. Her motor is gone. She has no power under the hood of that O2 machine, and she pulls it off to the inside, heartbreaking for Kim Markell, who is going for her second win of the season. At the same time, a lot of drivers actually having mechanical problems. Stringer in the 87 also went up in smoke down into turn number one, and, and as did um, Chris Louvier one lap ago in the 98. Mike Doan up the hill and across to receive the white flag and he is in 18th position. That's exactly where he wants to be. He's inside the top 20 and that will put him in front of Alex Tanker in points if he can stay there heading into round number 20. Um, he's really got to accredit that to both his pit crew and to just sheer dumb luck. A lot of drivers have had mechanical failures over the last few laps. Markel, Stringer and Lubier out from engine issues. Moro and Bejinov had to re come into the pits to get t uh, a new pair of a new set of tires after they blew one in various parts of the racetrack. But up front, it's all Carl and Dumian as he makes his wide way by Demir Bejanov, putting him a lap down after his tire failure just a lap or so ago. Carl and Dumian has dominated this race made an aggressive move to get up to second from the second row on the very first lap. He won in Waltham earlier this year. Velvet Works Racing, the team he drives for, this is going to be their last season, and I'm sure there's no better way to cap off the season by locking himself into the season finale with a win here in Road America. Harris up the hill to get the checkered flag in second spot, six and a half seconds back of him, and Dumian though, he was certainly fast today, but had nothing when it came to catching in Dumian. Bill Littlejohn, very solid third place, uh, kind of establishing himself as a bit of a road racer in the Hard Pro Series, with a second at Watkins Glen and now a third here. Fall of Thanos, fourth position in that 42 machine. Nice to see her have a good run. Luke Obrovac, did not see too much of him today. But fifth position for him, his teammate, Michael Kane, also got a top five in race number one. So not too surprised to see the other Blaze racing car do well. Julian Sanchez started on pole, only fell to sixth in that 58 car. Still a day I'm sure she's proud of. Uh, Sydney Krasta in seventh and Marcus Stroman in eighth were hanging in in the top ten all day long. Uh, Shrimp Engritz, impressive drive for him. We saw him outside the top 20 earlier on. Must have had a good pit stop because he will finish ninth. Ty Dent in the 83 will round out the top 10.